Hey guys, this is Echo Sowers, and you are checking out our first look video on ADSR. So in this video, we'll be checking out the CMI V, which came out with the newest iteration of Arturia's V collection. So this is so cool that Arturia, Arturia has actually emulated and modeled the CMI. It stands for Computer Musical Instrument. A lot of you guys probably don't know what it is. It's kind of the godfather of sampling, synthesis, and just digital audio. Um, in terms of it was the first ever uh, instrument where you could sample into it and then play something up and down the keyboard, right? So it blew a lot of people's minds in the early 80s. It also cost an insane amount of money. We're talking close to like $80,000 in the 80s, which is wild. It also was touchscreen. It came with uh, like what you see on the screen here. You have you, you came with a keyboard, came with like a typing keyboard, the light pen, which you use to touch the screen to control it, as well as the actual computer part, which had like a giant floppy reader. And a lot of you guys probably don't know what floppy is, but this thing predates well, like, predates me by a long shot. Uh, the first version came out in 1979. Series 2, which is what this is emulated off of, came out in, I believe, like 81, a couple years after the first version. And yeah, it was really popular for a while. It, it had a huge influence on pop music and hip hop and dance. And it just kind of didn't age gracefully. It had a very limited amount of essentially RAM and computing processing power that limited it, right? The samples were real short. Uh, it had, a, had an interesting 12-bit sound the first version. Then it went up to 16-bit aliasing. But it had a really unique sound. And that unique sound is still quite iconic. So in this video, we're going to play some of the patches, go through some of the features, and just talk about the different features of the CMIV because... In my opinion, this is one of the more feature-rich plugins that Arturia has ever released. So let's check it out. All right, so first things first, the GUI, the interface. This first screen here is just kind of a snapshot of everything. And you can actually play presets from here and browse the different presets. So check out this pad. It's pretty cool. Right, really crazy cool sound. Now I can ask you to go to the next preset here. I don't ever have to leave this screen if I don't want. I have filter controls. So we can make it buzzier. Now that filter is uh, kind of to deal with the aliasing that happened with the original. Now that is something you can have with this or you you don't have to, right? Because Arturia has added a bunch of cool new features to it to make it way more powerful than the original ever dreamed of being. Now, in terms of the library, it comes with, I believe, all of our, almost all of the samples that came with the Fairlight Series uh, to X library. And it also has a bunch of patches, hundreds of patches for you to tweak and get into. So I'm in the pad setting right now. Now, if I click on the actual screen, will I be looking at the main GUI where you can start to edit and just really get under the hood? So the CMIV is interesting in that it is part sample player, part synthesis. And you have two different types of synths. You have the time synth, which is kind of like what you had with the original CMI. You also had the spectral. You have a spectral synth, which is Arturia's addition to this. Now, you can have up to 10 different sound sources making up a whole sound. So think of it as 10 oscillators. And the oscillators can be either samples, time synth, or spectral synth. And you can then sequence those sounds in the sequencer. And you can mix the levels of the actual sounds outside of the sequencer with the mixer tab. And you also have a tune tuning map, which is just essentially where you can choose what keys have what sample or what sound source, right? Kind of like contact. So it is so feature rich. Now, just like with the uh, DX7 and the other Arturia synths here, you have your, your menu where you can resize the window. I'm working at 160% on a 27 inch iMac. You have save, export, all that sort of stuff. And then you have three different ways to browse. You have the browse where you can search, search by characteristics and categories. You can search by, uh, when you click pad here, it'll be filter and all types. And then there's just categories with the subsets like bass, brass, keys, lead, organ, pad, etc. And then if you uh, want to be slightly masochistic, you can 
scroll through everything if you want. So that's what's going on at the top. All right, let's get back to the actual interface. So right now, the patch that we have loaded up is a drum kit, I guess. I don't know when that happened. But we can go, if we go to the sequencer, we can actually see why this is playing. I'm going to hold down one note. Right, so we have kick right here, we have a snare. We can play each individual sound, volume, and pan. Now, if we go our sound here, we'll notice that we have 10 different sources, kick, snare, clap, stick, etc., And it's in that same order in the sequencer. So a lot of the patches actually have quite a bit. So if we go back to the pad, let's do addictive pad. This, this has three different oscillators or our uh, voicings. So one is a sample, and then two are using the spectral synth. So let's look at the sample engine because that's kind of the heart of it, right? That was the heart of the original CMI. You can load your own custom samples or you can load any of the samples that came with the Fairlight series, uh, the Fairlight CMI series too. So we can go to browse and we can choose any of these. So let's choose, so let's choose uh, cello three. We can play it from in here and then we double click and now it goes into our sound source. So let's solo it. We can go back to our control and we can see the sample. All right, so you notice that the uh, other oscillators are a lot higher pitched. So if you click on any of the sound sources or oscillators like cello three right now, I can go here and pitch up the octave and the octaves will remain the same in the first two, right? It doesn't affect that because I selected it. You also have sample start time. You can loop. Now, the reason why I spent some time looping because the CMI didn't have time stretch, right? <laughs> it didn't even have remotely close to ever having that. So with uh, the way it handled pitching things up and down, it actually sped up the audio or slowed it down, right? To, to pitch it down, it slowed down the audio. To pitch it up, it sped it up. Now, that's why looping is helpful. Otherwise, you're going to, you know, you're trying to play chords, or, you know, this type of chord even where you're, you're an octave or two apart. <laughs> it's just gonna bounce around and just be real unnatural because one note will end prematurely while you're still holding down another note. Right now there's this filters tab here, which can kind of take out the highs. And make it a little bit easier to loop Right? Now this will be a back and forth loop. It's a little bit easier to loop this, in my opinion, because you can just have it go to the end almost. Right, that's a pretty good sounding loop. Take the filter down a little. And yeah, we just added a sample from the actual Fairlight library. Let's add our own custom sample now. So I'm gonna hit the little folder icon. I'm gonna pull up a sample I made for a uh, sound, for a expansion pack for Serum. And let's load in Let's try this patch. Let's not do that one. I want something simpler. Let's do angels or 80s like. That's actually kind of fairly sounding, so let's pull that in. All right, so now we have ESW pad 80s like in our third sound source. So let's mute the other two. Let's turn the filter up. There it is.
All right, so sometimes when you import samples, I notice that the pitch is a little bit off and wonky. So I just messed with the semitone up uh, nine and then the fine a little bit. And now it sounds like it's right. All right, so let's look at how we can use one of these functions. So I'm gonna go to function A here, and we're gonna create kind of this ramp up. Let's sync it, and we're gonna change the rate here with this box. I'm gonna drag up to get it to be, let's do one over one. And I'm gonna go to assign, and I'm gonna hit map on A. And I want to use this as a way, kind of like an, uh, like an envelope for my first sound source. So let's take this with A selected, and we're gonna go to, let's do voice level. We're gonna drag up with this. Let's turn that off real quick. Let's go back to map. It's all good there, so let's go back to assign. And now we're gonna drag up with the map on this, right? So if we solo this, it's like having an envelope, right? All right, so I've loaded up a different sound and uh, we're gonna look at the time synth here. So this is just a way where you can essentially draw in different waveforms. You can choose different wavetables, right? You have saw, uh, we can do a bunch of different things here. We can move through these if I play a note. This is a patch that I just tweaked. So let's, uh, let's go to our third sound source and do this. This is mute. So we have nothing, right? And we're, we go to control, let's go to time synth, hit edit. We'll have it ramp up, and we're going to have this one ramp up as well. And let's choose, let's choose just basic saw for now. Right, so this is kind of like your envelope with the time synth, and this is the actual waveform over here. So if we have it start up, right, it's just gonna be a waveform. Which is a little bit weird way of doing it, I guess, is this is actually like your envelope over here. Uh, and this is how you know the sound's reacting. So if you want like a plucky sound. And you can have loop points and you can get kind of crazy with this for sure. So we can actually change the wave. Let's go to three. Do the same type of thing, just create like a little pluck. And we're gonna choose, let's choose a square. Right, just to change the sound. So we're drawing in that wave. Now if we go back to control, you'll see that here with uh, the, two, the 2D looks like that, 3D looks like that. Now we can go and we can convert this to a sample if you want, you can go to compute. And now it's gonna be a sample and it'll speed up and slow down like it would with any sample that you load from the browser or your own. All right guys, so let's go through and play a couple of the patches just to get an idea of the sound. There's so many patches, it's almost, it's almost impossible to go through and play. it take another 30 minutes. All right, there's some interesting kind of like hybrid basses. The really 80 basses. Right, I mean, that sound right there is not something that you'd find on like a uh, typical CMI. This would be. Right, so I actually really like the tambourine characteristic. I got some brass patches. Uh, that one's pretty cool. Let's try trumpet fall. It's gonna be a sample from the original. See how it speeds up and slows down. So it kind of renders it useless up in higher octaves, but right. All right, let's go to uh, keys. There's gonna be a bunch of cool keys. Let's try. Uh, let's try music box. So I mean, 
mean, that's just a straight up patch from the original, it sounds like. Got a pretty cool tone, but the sample thing, you need, you need to loop that guy to get it to work well. Let's go to another one. It's got like a seventh on it, or a fifth. That one loops, so this one's pretty cool. Let's try this. Right, pretty cool road sound, got some grit to it. The pianos were never good on a CMI. Technology just wasn't there. Ooh, I like that. Pretty cool sound, pretty cool tone. Yeah, it's interesting. Some of the keys are just like too old and kind of weird sounding, and some of them are this great hybrid mix that I love. Go to the mixer and turn everything down because that's really loud. All right, let's look at some of the leads now. Let's go to Sam. So that's pretty uh, iconic sounding <laughs> CMI sound. This is a good example of something that has a tuning map on it, right? Some of the higher pa higher keys are playing different sa samples. So this is an interesting shout style. It's just a bunch of like Sarars. Sarars, like I, said, I mentioned before, really, really famous patch in, in uh, CMI. Now we have kind of like almost like a future bass wobble. that one. Let's try a synth pop lead. All right, so a lot of great sounds in here. Um, last thing I'm going to play, let's play a couple of the strings and then we're going to call it a day on this, this video.
pretty cool organ string sound. So yeah, there's a quick smattering of some of the patches. There's hundreds to play. If you guys want to hear more patches, definitely check out Arturia's website. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. 